If you were to Google the most successful smuggler of Egyptian antiquities of all time, your top result is going to be Jonathan Tokley Perry. His entire story is quite interesting, there's a 20 minute episode of Masterminds devoted to him, but I wanted to focus on one particular technique that he used to smuggle antiquities through Egyptian customs. In 1987, Egypt completely banned the export of antiquities. Now, to make it easier for customs in countries like this where the export is banned, they often institute another law that says all reproductions must be made of plaster. That way, if there's something in your luggage antiquity-shaped, all they have to do is check to see if it's made of stone. If it's made of stone, they take it. If it's made of plaster, you can keep it. What Jonathan would do is he would take an antiquity like this, he would cover the entire thing with a clear coat, and then coat the entire thing with plaster, filling in the places where there was no stone, and then painting the entire thing to look like a gaudy street vendor tourist trap. He then buys a real souvenir, keeps the receipt, removes the base, and places the sculpture on it. Having done that, the object looked absolutely ghastly, but it gave us a good chance of getting through. And the way Egyptian authorities would test the difference between stone and plaster was just by scratching them with a house key. Jonathan would prepare a very thick layer of plaster on the underside of the item. When the guard went to scratch it, he would say, please don't scratch it on the face, and would point at the bottom, where he had a nice thick layer of plaster prepared. Once successfully back in England, the entire thing could be dropped into a pot of acetone, where everything would just float to the surface except for the stone. Jonathan Tokley Perry is confirmed to have smuggled at least 3,000 pieces out of Egypt over four years. He got caught when the man he was training as his protege got a little impatient and decided to use Jonathan's rat line to sneak out some of his own papyrus, but when he couldn't ask Jonathan, the expert, to verify its authenticity, he brought it to the British Museum, and the British Museum called the police. Although he was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor in Egypt, Jonathan served only three years in a British prison. He changed his name and mostly disappeared from public life after 2001, although according to his Wikipedia page, he appeared on this television program. The claim has no citation, but there was a 1997 made-for-TV movie on the same topic as well.